be with you today in this very important announcement. Today, the Lord will be your two commissioner, Russell Mike Murray, and I am very honored to be joined by President Nathan Greer to deliver some exciting news about the reopening of I-85. I know you are all eager to hear the news we have to share, so without further ado, I'd like to, like to introduce Governor Deal. Governor Deal. Thank you very much, Chairman Brown. Good morning. Thank you all for being here today. I do have some great news. As of rush hour next Monday morning, the Interstate 85 bridge will be completed and will be open for traffic. <laughs> And the even better news may be that it may be sooner than that, and you'll hear from the commissioner in a moment about those possibilities. But this is a time to say thank you, because this is an extraordinarily short period of time to complete such a major project. Uh, certainly, first of all, we need to acknowledge the efforts of our State Department of Transportation, uh, our federal government, our state and local transit agencies, and the work of the contractor, C.W. Matthews. I also want to thank uh, Marta, Greta, and Serta for leading the charge and providing alternative ways for people to get in and out of our capital city. I'm especially thankful for the prompt and significant response from President Trump and uh, the DOT Federal Secretary of Transportation, Elaine Chow, for the financial assistance that they provided us. And that first announcement, as you may know, came within less than 24 hours from the time that the bridge had collapsed. I also want to thank uh, Russell McMurray and his entire team. This has been a very impactful uh, event. And it, certainly it would not have happened without the efficiencies of the State Department of Transportation and their allied agencies and the exceptional work of the contractor. I want to thank the local business owners and those who have uh, been very helpful during this time of process. They have given people options for work schedules like teleworking and flex safe schedules for their vehicle traffic, which has kept them off the roads during peak hours, and that has been very, very helpful in the process. I also want to go back and thank again the first responders who were the ones who prevented there being any injuries or deaths from this initial uh, disaster that occurred. Uh, we've already acknowledged them previously, but also appropriate to do so again today. Um, now, I want to thank the ones who have been most affected by this, and that is the motoring public. Although they have been inconvenienced, by and large, their attitudes have been very, very positive and they have been helpful, and they have been understanding. And now I'm going to do something that I don't usually do, and that is I want to thank the media. You have been very helpful in this process. You have been very consistent in your reporting of the road closures, of the opening times, of the daily updates on the progress and reroutings that have occurred, and of course have helped us in those commuter briefings that have been necessary to give people the kind of information that is helpful, and I thank you for doing that. Now, why is this announcement so significant? Because, first of all, the I-85 corridor is a major corridor for commerce as well as for individuals. Uh, I am told that there's some 243 vehicles who pass on this roadway on a daily basis, and that is a significant number of travelers. Certainly the response from the people of our state has been nothing short of uh, spectacular and remarkable. Just think about it. To be able to completely demolish the damaged section of a bridge and totally replace it and open it up again for business as usual in just six short weeks. We may have set some records in the process of doing that. Certainly the incentives that were given to the contractor, C.W. Matthews, 
was one of the main reasons that we are completing this project well ahead of the initial schedule. Now, how significant is that early completion to all of us? I'm told that the estimated financial impact is about $27 million for having completed it earlier than the original projected completion date. And that is a benefit to all of us, businesses, commuters, and the state, of course, itself. And that is a significant uh, savings. So once again, thanks to the contractor, C.W. Matthews. And in conclusion of my part of it, I want to just simply say this is a day of celebration. It is one we should all be appreciative of. I think it also underlines and demonstrates in a very positive fashion the can-do attitude that the state of Georgia has. When we confront tragedies and disasters, we can respond, and we can respond appropriately, and we can respond in a very timely fashion. Now, one of the fellows who is responsible for all of this, in fact, he is the head guy, and that is the commissioner of our Department of Transportation. And he's going to give you much more detail than I have just given you, but uh, please welcome an individual who he and his staff and his team have done an exceptional job, and that is the Commissioner of our Department of Transportation, Russell McMurray. Russell? Thank you, Governor Dill, and thanks to your leadership throughout this event and your dedication to transportation infrastructure. I'd also just like to echo his thanks to our great support that we had at the USDOT from Secretary Elaine Chow and our Federal Highway Division right here in Atlanta. It's been outstanding. But also we have to again thank our partners that are here with us today, MARTA, Greta, the Gwinnett County Transit System, the Atlanta Police Department, and the Georgia State Patrol who's been out on constant vigilant work making sure travel is safe and providing those travel options for everybody. And again, it can't be said enough thanks to our contractor, C.W. Matthews Contracting, a Georgia contractor from Marietta, for the amazing work that they have done thus far. And again, my most sincere thanks and appreciation to the motorists of Georgia who've had to endure this now for about six weeks. And thanks to them and their businesses who have allowed them, again, to have flexible work time and telecommuting options. Without a doubt, how much a difference that has made. Now, let's talk about what's been done and what's left to be done because it is getting very short. In just six weeks, over 700 feet of bridge have been reconstructed and really built from new. 13 columns, support columns, had to be reconstructed, turned into four support caps that hold 61 beams. The 61 beams had to be designed, fabricated, transported, and installed in their exact location. In fact, two of the spans were very unique that every beam was unique to itself, which added time and complexity to their fabrication and construction. It's estimated there's over 13 million pounds of old bridge that had to be removed, and we've installed over 500,000 pounds of new reinforcing steel that is surrounded by concrete. In fact, over 2,100 cubic yards of concrete. To give you a perspective, that's over 230 of those concrete trucks you see traveling up and down the road. And we're very fortunate that a concrete supplier was just literally right around the corner. And of course, what you have seen, 24-7, seven, seven days a week work, 24-7, people out there dedicated to getting this roadway back open. And very fortunate, in this six weeks, there's only been one full day loss to rain. So we have been very fortunate in the weather front. Now, what's left to be done? Because as you go out, you can see these bridges that look like bridges. You're seeing some stripes on the road, and they look like they're ready. But there's still work to be done. So let me tell you what has to happen before these bridges can be open. We have to install the expansion joints between each of the beam sets. We have to complete, uh, complete pouring the concrete side barrier and both north and southbound, and that concrete needs strength on it before we don't want anybody to bump into it or hit it, so it has to be strong. 
We have electrical work still to be done in the median to install the street lots. And of course, as any project, you have the final cleanup, sweeping, removing construction debris, and things like that. Now, the really final piece of the puzzle happens when the stripes on the roads are reconfigured back to their original traffic pattern. As you know, the stripes bring you off on the Beaufort Spring connector now, either north or southbound, so that striping has to be done. It is our intent that this will happen on Saturday and Sunday, that both northbound would probably be first, and Sunday uh, southbound would open at some point. But the governor's announcement that it, we're open for business on Monday morning is absolutely guaranteed. Now there is one factor, because we can't give you the exact times, Saturday or Sunday, is weather. We do have a rain in the forecast on Friday, which does affect installation of expansion joints and does affect being able to place the stripes on the road. So that is our one variable. Please stay tuned as these as again, our commitment to you and to the public is that as soon as one is ready to open, it will be open and we will notify you immediately. Now I've been asked often, this has happened on such record pace, is it safe? Absolutely, it is safe. In fact, we've had at least 10 inspectors a day, totaling some 2,500 man hours of inspection starting throughout the entire process. Throughout the entire process, safety is built in into this process, starting with the design, fabrication of the materials, actual placement and inspection, and testing of all the material products themselves, such as concrete and steel that's involved in reconstruction of this bridge. So feel confident that this project has probably had a higher level of emphasis. It's all in one eye shot of an inspector, about 350 feet linearly. So it has a lot of inspection and feel confident that all the testing has been done, that it is safe and it is a quality project. Now one of the other benefits I'd like to highlight that we took advantage of while this section of roadway was closed was to be able to get out and resurface the uh, I-85 inside this area. That work is anticipated right in that area to be completed as well, so that on Monday morning when you drive through, you will not only have new bridge to ride on, but you will have a new uh, road surface to ride on with new stripes and reflectors as well. So that was a very big benefit. Uh, the project was already uh, slated to be done, but to be later in the summer. So again, to try to minimize the disruption to the traveling public, we're proud that the two contractors that's part of that, ER Snell Contracting and CW Matthews, were able to team up and get this work done sooner rather than later. Now, again, in conclusion, I would just like to again thank all those who chose transit and teleworked or had flexible work hours. Thank you so much. What you've done has made a difference. And I would like to encourage you to keep your same patterns. If you chose transit, consider keeping on transit. Stay the course. It makes a difference. And anything we can do to relieve and reduce congestion is much appreciated as Monday rolls around. And again, my final thanks is to the men and women of Georgia Department of Transportation for their dedication and commitment to quality and safety and the dedication to get this road open, as well as the team from CW Matthews. They certainly deserve a round of applause. Thank you very much, and we'll be glad to answer a few questions. The well, question was, did I ever think we would be back here today, six weeks later, announcing that it was being uh, opened again? I am pleasantly surprised by the short time frame, and we all should be. And as I said earlier, it is a testament, I think, to the dedication of a lot of people. And uh, we should all be thankful for that, but this is a good news story today. No, uh, we have not undertaken that, and I don't think that would be appropriate. It would be, these are one of those kinds of circumstances that uh, we just try to ameliorate the, the damage as quickly as possible, and I think we certainly have done that.
Well, um, let me ask the commissioner to, to respond, Doug. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, the use of incentives we've actually deployed before. I think this gives us a good business case to look at deploying probably more incentives. We actually have disincentives on all our projects, so if a project's not done by a certain time, uh, there is a disincentive. But some of the other projects we're doing, like the Northwest Corridor on I-75, building those express lanes, have a built-in incentive because the contractor is actually financing part of that project. So it incentivizes contractors to get done even sooner. So those are some lessons learned. The other thing we've learned some lessons on, again, is some of the things that have come out of our design build arena. Uh, some of the pieces that were fabricated for this bridge off-site typically are built on-site, so that they were able to be fabricated away from the job site, brought into the job site, incorporated into the work, which sped things up. So we'll continue to look for innovation and lessons learned from this event. Yeah, there, there's no concern with the other infrastructure that took the uh, traffic. Uh, obviously, 285 and 75 and I-20 were the most. And of course, your major arterials had most of the traffic, such as Cheshire Bridge, Peachtree, uh, Lenox, uh, and Piedmont, obviously. So again, uh, good working infrastructure. And it just, again, reinforces the criticality of having good, strong infrastructure. So we're looking at the total impact of the uh, financial. Uh, as we wrap this up, again, this, the rebuild was about $1.6 million to do the demolition, about 11.9 to rebuild the project itself. And we're in conversation, again, with our transit partners that are here with us today and uh, looking at those impacts, and we'll assess that. And in the days ahead, we'll have a better idea of the uh, fi total financial cost impact to the project itself. So the Northwest Corridor project is actually by another contractor, and so they've been able to continue along. Uh, we did have to uh, take a few lane closures out uh, of that project as traffic was being routed around 285 to 75 to come back into town. So it has a small effect, but we don't, we'll look at that. Again, that's a big multi-year project, uh, and we'll have to assess the total impact, if any, there. 24 to 48 hours. Was there any critical point in the decision making behind the scenes or with traffic management to get this project on such a fast track? Well, the thing that we all tried to do was respond very quickly. And I think it's think that coming out of the gate very strong with CW Matthews being able to mobilize, mobilize immediately and start the demolition work really the next morning, just as soon as the site was available, uh, gained a lot of time. And I think that was a real uh, strong point of getting this project underway so that we didn't have a lot of time wasted initially. And again, uh, the credit goes to our bridge design engineers who started immediately, worked all through the weekend, and really had plans done by the wee hours of Monday morning uh, right after the uh, incident itself. So things moved very quickly and it was all hands on deck to make sure we could go as quick as possible. Okay. So we're very blessed in uh, Atlanta and the Department of Transportation certainly has been advancing traffic signal management of coordinating traffic signals along the entire corridor instead of just individual. And we certainly try to maximize the capacity of cars going through and reduce the side street uh, ability to access that. That is actively managed on a daily basis. So the adjustments will be made as necessary, again, to have the right balance of the through traffic and the cross street traffic. And I'm pleased to say that we're continuing to advance even more of those corridors uh, throughout metropolitan Atlanta, as well as the city of Atlanta as well. That's one of their major projects as well. Uh, signal coordination and the efficiency of traffic signals really does make a big difference. Uh, that's correct. 
Well, thank you all for being here. Let me conclude by thanking the media again. Thank you for your responsiveness. Thank you for getting out accurate information, as I'm sure you will do, regarding this conference this morning. No, I'll take it later. But thank you, Doug. Thank you for alerting me. It's going to be off topic. Thank you all for being here today. Very good. Thank you, Governor. <laughs> Very good.